Let's move on and look at the final section of this accounting and finance module, which is cost centres and profit centres. We'll look at what they are and then the benefits and drawbacks of them. When we're talking about cost or profit centres, we're talking about a section of a business that can be seen as distinct. Now this could be, for example, a specific product or a branch of a business. It's important to be clear on the difference between a cost and a profit centre. A cost centre is a part of a business where costs can be calculated and controlled, whereas a profit centre is a part of a business where costs and revenue can be calculated and controlled. For example, the marketing department could be a cost centre, but not a profit centre because it doesn't generate profit in its own right. Confused? Just stay with me. By setting up cost or profit centres, it's easier to identify which parts of the business are operating efficiently and work out why areas aren't. Also, by dividing the business into cost or profit centres means that costs can be more easily controlled as managers will become more aware of the financial consequences of their actions. Within the cost or profit centres, employees might gain more responsibility and become more motivated and therefore more efficient. The managers that have delegated budgetary authority will be able to spend more time on strategic issues. But remember, business studies is all about providing balanced answers. So creating cost or profit centres can also cause problems. This is because control over budgets is passed down the hierarchy. So the business must be sure that the employees are able to cope with this. The training may well be needed, which adds to the business's costs. Plus, any change in working practices can be faced with resistance especially if the employees don't fully understand what they'll have to do. At the same time, some managers might feel that their status is being diminished as budgetary control is passed to staff lower down the hierarchy. You also need to bear in mind that not all businesses can set up cost or profit centres. For example, businesses with only one product or where there was an autocratic style of management where decision making was centralised. So, if faced with this topic in the exam, ask yourself what type of business is in the case study. Let's have a look at a couple of exam questions. For the first one, we'll use Chris's surfboard business. Remember, he now has more than one shop. Here's the question. Analyse the possible benefits to Chris's business of running different branches as profit centres. Spend about six minutes on this. Had a go? Let's go through some of the ideas you probably included. You probably started with a definition of cost centres to get content marks. If Chris runs different shops as profit centres, he can see how successfully each shop is running and decide if he needs to focus his attention on certain shops. For example, some shops might have too many sales assistants, so he could make them more efficient by reducing staff levels. Another point could be that if Chris has shops around the country, the employees may know the customer needs in those areas better than he does. This could mean that marketing decisions are more accurately made and the shop becomes more successful. Two points would be enough for this type of question. Remember, the examiner doesn't want a list of profit centre benefits that could come from a textbook. He wants to see how using profit centres will benefit Chris's business. Why don't you have a go at this one? This time spend about 10 minutes on it. To what extent will the creation of profit centres motivate its employees? Had a go. You probably picked up on the fact that this is an evaluation question. So let's see how it could have been structured. A definition of profit centres would have been a good start and would immediately get you some content marks. You then need to think about ways in which creating profit centres will motivate staff and ways in which they might not motivate the staff. For this, you'd probably discuss the fact that staff may feel they have more responsibility, which increases motivation. It may make them work more efficiently and perhaps make more sales for Chris. 
or they may stay working for him longer so he doesn't have to go through the recruitment process so often. The staff may also feel more empowered. So, for example, they may be able to influence the prices that the products sell for, given their knowledge of the local market. On the other hand, the staff may feel that a lot more work is involved and may resist change and cause unrest in the business. In terms of evaluation, it's important to point out that this all depends on how Chris implements the change, the type of employees he has, and their ability to run profit centres. Really, it's just common sense disguised in terminology.